I've come to Sheffield Hallam University to speak to Dr. Dave Rogerson, who's a specialist in obesity, weight loss and weight management. I'm with Dr. Dave and his doctorate was in obesity and weight management. Why did you decide to go into this field? Well, thank you for, for welcoming me for a start. I went into to the field really because uh, because of my experience as a practitioner as being somebody who would uh, work with people to, to manage their weight in the past. Yeah. I sort of became aware that it was a very complex and difficult issue for people. So I decided to research it really so to get a better understanding of the factors that, that kind of lead to obesity and to understand the experiences of people when they're trying to manage their weight um, such that we can develop programs and diets and interventions to allow them to, to improve their weight loss basically. So there's so much information out there and it's so conflicting mm -hmm. and obesity is a huge national and international epidemic. Why do you think people actually become overweight in the first place? It's a, it's a complex, obesity is a very, very complex thing. Mm -hmm. um, it has all sorts of physiological and genetic things that underpin it, but they're contextualised with lifestyle, mm -hmm. with a socio-political environment, and with a social environment that in some cases reinforces it. So whereas it might be that you know, people eat a little bit too much, you know, yeah. that's fundamentally what it is, is it's, it's an energy balance issue, it's a sort of complex social environment that reinforces that as well as some psychological difficulties that people might experience when they try to change that habit. So, in fact, weight loss is, and weight experience, is, is a whole life change for people. It isn't just about eating less or moving more, it's about changing the dynamic of their life experience. And in terms of a person, what do you think is the trigger or the thing that changes within their lifestyle or their backgrounds that might then lead to them overeating or not moving as much? There's, there's different theories, right? So, some of the theories that that people have suggested is it's been developed from childhood. Mm -hmm. So if you think about some of the ways that we raise children, you know, some of the messages that I know certainly for myself, um, I was always taught to finish your plate for yeah. a start. Um, and that sort of transcends into to adulthood. So some of the things that you'll find that people do is they don't like to waste food, so they eat more than they should. Yeah. They override the potential satiety signals that we get. Mm -hmm. So our bodies have sort of intrinsic signals to let us know when we've eaten too much and what, you know, how much is enough. Um, if we override that for a long period of time, so if we eat a lot for a long period of time, we kind of lose touch with really what that feels like. Yeah, what it feels to feel full and satisfied. And exactly. So um, this would then lead to overeating and not having a stop off or a cut point. Potentially, yeah. So not understanding your appropriate signals, so not yeah. understanding when you're full, not understanding when you're hungry, and not understanding really what, what sort of good food tastes like. So what I mean by that is some foods can be overly palatable. Mm -hmm. So if a food is overly palatable, it means it tastes a little bit too good. Okay. And that tends to be food that tends to have a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, a lot of fat. So Has like chocolate or a lot of processed foods? Um, a lot of foods have been manufactured to taste a certain way, so they have certain what they call organoleptic properties. So they taste and create a certain pleasure response. Mm -hmm. So like one of the theories behind obesity is that maybe some people have a sort of dysfunctional pleasure responses in, in association with eating certain foods. So. To contextualise that, let's say you eat a chocolate bar, mm -hmm. um, you, know, you have like a little square of chocolate, can you just stop at one square? Some people can't, you know, they'll have one square and that leads to the whole bar being gone. Okay. That might potentially be because the food is, you're sort of processing the food as being too pleasurable. Yeah. So you're constantly trying to match the pleasure to your, how much you can pop down your throat. So why do you think some people can eat one square of a dark chocolate bar, for instance, and then you've got the all or nothing? It's that kind of mindset which I think often links with obesity. What happens? Why do the two different people think so differently? I think it's a combination of lifestyle, the way that people have been brought up, yeah. and I think it's something that's been reinforced over a long period of time. Um, and I think it's possibly because psychologically the concept of all or nothingness is related to things like anxiety, things like uh, perfectionism, mm -hmm. um, things like what we call dichotomous thinking patterns. So some people will naturally have that sort of thought, proce and thought processing and that way of, of making sense of their, their thinking and their, their behaviour, mm -hmm. uh, whereas some people don't. So it's almost like a psychological um, trait, if you want to call it that. Yeah. So if some people have got that psychology and got that in place and you know, they've been brought up in a certain environment that's promoted you finish your plate, you eat it, you don't finish, you know, you, it is all or nothing. Yeah. But it's kind of reinforced that over a long period of time. So why some people can do it and some people can't, it's probably a combination of genetics. Mm -hmm. It's probably a combination of the way that someone's been raised. Mm -hmm. And it's probably a combination that added to that, their sort of psychological makeup as well. 
So do you think people can change that habit or behaviour or the way that they think and perceive food? Yes, I think they can. Um, there's a concept called cognitive restructuring, which is, you know, a, a psychologist would be able to help with. Mm -hmm. But you can, you can certainly change someone's understanding of food and you can change someone's relationship with food. Um, but you have to do it in a way that, that transcends just what people are eating. Okay. You need to look at the broader life itself, so the people that you're surrounding yourself with, mm -hmm. um, the sort of environment in terms of your workplace, in terms of your home environment, in terms of the whole different things that you would affect why you would eat something. 